Hello, brave souls. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to learn about narcissism, an issue characterized by entitlement and grandiosity. We explore the differences between narcissistic behavior and narcissistic personality disorder with Dr. Ramani Durvasula, a clinical psychologist and narcissism expert. From the deceptive charm of love bombing to the heartbreaking impact on victims' mental health, this episode hopes to shed light on the complicated nature of narcissistic relationships and their important psychological consequences. Let's start with what narcissism is. Entitlement, grandiosity, arrogance, selfishness. They are willing to do whatever they need to do to get ahead. They make more money. They're more successful at dating. They look great on paper. So the very thing we're socialized to think of is not good for us. That's tricky. What's happening during love bombing is it's a period that feels like perfect attunement. A person gets you. This can feel like it is healing a childhood wound. That's how powerful it is. When you ask for time and they say no, that's beyond a red flag. Somebody invalidating you and subjugating you, that's abuse. The very gift we have of empathy and compassion actually gets weaponized. There's anxiety, there's sadness, there's self-blame. You just sort of cut off from you because you're not allowed to have those things and have this relationship. So let's start with what narcissism is, because that's sort of what's foundational. Narcissism is a personality style, it, which means it's pervasive, it's stable, it's traits, it's patterns, it's behaviors. And in the case of narcissism, it's comprised of lack of empathy or variable empathy, entitlement, grandiosity, arrogance, admiration, the need for admiration and validation and admiration and validation seeking, selfishness, uh, superficiality, shallowness of emotion, a need for control. Behaviorally, they show up as manipulative. There's a lot of gaslighting. They're, they're often prone to betrayal. Um, there's a lot of lying, devaluation, minimization. Um, and people who are in these relationships it, it really do a number on them. So that's the, all that stuff I described though is the personality style and how it shows up. That's narcissism. Narcissistic individuals often lack insight into their deep-seated fragility and shame leading to defensive behaviors such as entitlement, grandiosity, and perfectionism. So there is, within all of us, there's see these, just like the planet Earth, there's tectonic plates that move around, and we're not even aware of it, which is why even you and I, exposed to the same stimulus, would have very different reactions. Stimulus is the same, our reactions are different, and what brought us to that reaction was a series of things that happened with, a, with us intrapsychically. Same thing happens with the inner world of the narcissistic person. The healthier the person, the more in touch they are with what's happening internally, right? So that's the that's plumbing the depths. That's the, the soul work of therapy where you're like, okay, I see, I see where this is coming from. We're never always going to be perfect, but we might give ourselves grace or make amends very quickly, say, I was out of line. I'm so sorry. I know where that came from, but that's not your problem. I was not okay kind of thing, right? That's what a healthy person does. For a narcissistic person, they're really not in touch with what's happening sort of, again, intrapsychically at that deep, deep level. But what is happening is that the internal core for the narcissistic person is quite damaged. The ego is very fragile and one would even argue malformed. There's a tremendous core of shame in the narcissistic person. So defenses like entitlement, grandiosity, perfectionism, the need to be seen as perfect and great and almost a fantasy object is what keeps, almost to view it as like trying to cap a volcano, right? All of that stuff keeps that lava down, but you can't keep the lava down. Every so often someone's going to even give a little bit of feedback like, hey, you know, we wanted to give you some feedback on this, tiny, but that's enough to wedge that cap off that lava and it starts flowing. But instead of that being a self-reflective moment for the narcissistic person who's not in touch with that damaged inner core because it would be too, dev too devastating for them, they lash out at the person who dared move the cap off the capped off volcano and the volcano comes out at the other person. The challenge is we don't always know what's going to set a person off, right? I I've, had, I've had people say to me, we we're having the most wonderful time and all I said was, I don't think this is the parking structure for this theater. I think it's the next one over. Are you telling me I can't drive? Rah! And you're like, oh my gosh, it's raining and I didn't want us to walk in the rain. And the person was not commenting on their driving at all. They're just, they're reading the sign because they're the passenger, right? And all hell breaks loose. It could be the kind of thing like, oh, I'm so happy you're wearing that sweater again. I love that blue with your eyes. 
are you trying to tell me I don't have a lot of clothes? Like I, I could buy and sell you a hundred times. Like, what are you trying to tell me? And you're like, oh my gosh. So what, what happens when that happens? We don't know how to talk to them anymore. We get more and more tentative. We're walking on eggshells more and more. But for them, they're not in touch with this process, right? That there is this fragile ego. Because to be in touch with a fragile ego means that they're just ordinary like the rest of us. They're just a person. And that's intolerable. Can we do therapeutic work to get them there? I mean, it's very rarely. It's not likely to happen. You need a level of motivation and commitment and willingness to be vulnerable that we're not going to see in 99% of narcissistic people. Is there Are there unicorns? Sure, there's unicorns everywhere. But I'm not opening a private practice based on unicorns. I mean, I've done work with a lot of narcissistic clients. We've done some good work together. We've moved the needle a little bit. Has that needle moving undone the hurts of the people around them? Narcissistic abuse manipulates victims into doubting their reality through tactics like gaslighting, shaming, and neglect. It often involves a reversal of roles in parent-child dynamics and employs love bombing to create dependency. This abuse targets the victim's vulnerabilities, leading to a deep entanglement in the relationship. So narcissistic abuse are the behaviors and the tactics that the narcissistic person engages in in any relationship. And these are laundry lists, including manipulation, minimization, invalidation, uh, gaslighting, rage, reactivity, entitled rage. I'm more special than you. It's it's domination patterns like uh, like shifting blame, not taking responsibility. This is not my fault. It's your fault. They don't ever take accountability. Um, there is a a lot of betrayal. There's a lot of lying. There is a lot of neglect. Um, they will shame people for expressing their needs. Like basically, they expect the other person to be in service to them. So that's what the narcissistic abuse looks like. The fallout of narcissistic abuse is what happens to the other person in the relationship who by and large ends up ruminating about what's happening, regretting what they said or even that they ever got into this relationship. There's anxiety, there's sadness, there's self-blame, self-doubt. There can be over time a lot of dissociation, not separate personalities, but a sort of cutting off oneself from one's needs, some one's wants. You just sort of cut off from you because you're not allowed to have those things and have this relationship function. Um, there can be a lot of second guessing oneself, a lot of sense of isolation, loneliness. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Other people like this person. This person is so successful. It's got to be me. That's why the book's called It's Not You. And so you brought up the idea of what does it look like in parents and what does it look like in intimate relationships? There's commonalities, but also differences, right? So the commonalities in both cases, the narcissistic person sort of usurps the identity of the other person because it's like a one-way highway that only the narcissistic person gets to have their needs met. But if the other person expresses their needs, the narcissistic person will shame them, call them selfish, call them greedy, call them needy, right? And yet the narcissistic person's needs get to be met. Now, you can see how problematic this would be for a child because a child learns very early on that there's almost a role reversal. They are to meet the needs of the parent, the emotional needs of the parent, the public needs of the parent, like make me look good, basically, and everything will be fine. Well, the child has one need and one need only when they're a child, and that's attachment. Attachment is safety. Attachment is security. So the child's not going to roll up and say, you narcissistic fool, I'm not meeting your needs. They're going to say, I better meet this person's needs. And the kid might be recruited into any kind of role from housekeeper to shrink, to keep your mouth shut, to keep the house clean, to don't cause any trouble. Some kids rebel under those circumstances, but a lot of kids learn the family rules so they can stay attached, right? And then if the child did express a need, the parent would say, how dare you? I do so much for you. How could you do this? And the child's like, oh my gosh, how could I have done that? So over time, it's an indoctrination. And the child learns to squelch their needs, squelch their wants, and really believe that a relationship is a place where you only give of yourself and expect nothing back. And if you did ask for something, you're going to be shamed and shut down. So that's the dynamic. A lot of the parent guilts and shames the child all the time. The child internalizes that dynamic, which obviously is a setup for adulthood. But even if you didn't grow up like that and you run into a narcissistic person in adulthood, that kind of dynamic can start in adulthood because a lot of people say, I'm in love with this person. There's a lot of stuff I like about them. I'm attracted to them. They're charming. They're charismatic. They're cool. We're having a good time, whatever it may be. And then 
after that initial idealization and seduction period we call love bombing happens, a slow descent and de de devaluation starts to happen. And then your needs do get shamed. And it happens so subtly that at first you're thinking, maybe I did overstretch or maybe it is me because healthy empathic people question themselves. That's the nature of empathy is like, maybe I do need to examine this. So the very gift we have of empathy and compassion actually gets weaponized like a boomerang and it comes right back at our heads. And so that ends up happening. And so these, these relationships end up in this really unfortunate reversal. And the greater the stakes in the relationship, whatever they may be, maybe people are married, maybe they have kids, maybe there's a financial reason, cultural reason, religious reason. Now the person in the relationship who's being narcissistically abused is justifying, maybe it's not that bad. I'm being ridiculous. Everyone else likes them. They're super successful. We did have fun last week. I do like how they look. We do have good sex at times. So it gets messy. And that's the nature of the narcissistic relationship is that it's messy. So a lot of people start to believe, well, relationships are complicated. So maybe this is just complicated. No, 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 no. Complicated is maybe when you both have two jobs and you're trying to raise kids and all this other stuff. That's complicated. Somebody invalidating you and subjugating you, that's abuse. There's a difference. Mm. We've explored narcissism, from the deceitful tactics of love bombing to the harmful impact of gaslighting. Dr. Romani Dervasula's insights helped us distinguish between narcissistic features, revealing the true nature of narcissistic abuse. This journey emphasizes the necessity of recognizing the indications of narcissism and provides individuals with the knowledge they need to overcome these difficult relationships on their path to recovery and self-realization. Thank you for watching, take care, and see you soon.